Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Gabby Petito? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. At the time making this video, it appears as though this case is just getting started with updates coming in frequently. So I imagine the situation will change many times before some type of resolution is realized. I'll start with the background in this case, then I'll move to my analysis. Gabby Petito and Brian Laundrie started dating in March of 2019 and moved to Northport, Florida not long after this. Apparently they had met in high school and they got together after that and became involved romantically. They became engaged in July of 2020 which Brian announced in an Instagram post. It read, quote, My biggest fear is that one day I'll wake up and it will all have been a dream because that is what every second has felt like since the moment we found each other. Till death do us part or until I wake up, I'm so happy the answer was yes, unquote. The couple traveled to Blue Point, New York, where Gabby was from, for her brother's high school graduation ceremony on June 17, 2021. Apparently, the couple had a dream of going on a cross-country trip. They wanted to experience the van life and live free. They planned on stopping in a number of locations and ending the trip in Oregon. On July 2, 2021, they departed from Blue Point, New York in a 2012 Ford Transit van. It looks like the vehicle may have been modified to serve as some type of camper, but it does not appear as though it was greatly modified. At this point, Gabby was 22 years old and Brian was 23. The couple documented their trip on social media, including Instagram. On July 4, Gabby posted an image on Instagram posing between a rock formation at Monument Rocks Natural Landmark in Kansas. Brian posted an image of him sitting on the couple's Ford Transit. On July 8, Gabby posted from Colorado Springs, Colorado, on July 10 and 11, she posted images from the Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve in southern Colorado. The couple was in Zion National Park in Utah on July 16. Gabby posted that she had spent the two previous nights in the park. On July 18, it appears as though they were still there. She posted images from the Narrows at Zion. On July 21, Gabby posted from Bryce Canyon National Park. This is also in Utah about 72 miles northeast of Zion. Based on a post from July 22, it appears as though the couple struggled a bit with the rain. On July 26, Gabby made a number of posts from Mystic Hot Springs in Monroe, Utah. After posting on July 31 from Canyonlands National Park in southeastern Utah, Gabby did not post again until August 12. By this time, the couple was at Arches National Park in Grand County, Utah. On this same day, August 12, somebody notified the police describing an incident involving Gabby and Brian. The Moab City Police investigated. Here's a summary of the police report and body camera footage that was released. The police received a report of a domestic problem near the Moonflower Co-op. A couple in a white Ford Transit were engaged in an altercation. The police located a witness named Christopher, who said a male was in an argument with a female, the male walked away so he could calm down, but the female did not want to be separated. She began slapping him. The male grabbed her face and pushed her back before trying to lock himself in the van, but the female was able to gain entry. The couple drove away from the scene. The police caught up with the vehicle and initiated a traffic stop near Arches National Park. The vehicle struck the curb before stopping near the entrance to the park. An officer approached the vehicle and found Brian was driving and Gabby was crying uncontrollably in the passenger seat. The couple told the officer they suffered from mental health problems and were having a tough time getting along. The symptoms were getting worse and they were arguing quite a bit. Gabby specifically mentioned that she had OCD and Brian said they both had anxiety. There's also a mention of Gabby being in a manic state, according to Brian, but it's not clear if that's tied to any actual diagnosis or if he was just improperly using the term manic. The police decided this was a mental health crisis and not a criminal case. No charges were filed. 
Gabby stayed in the van, and Brian was taken to a hotel for the night. Brian flew back to Florida on August 17 to help his father move items belonging to Brian and Gabby in or out of a storage unit. Brian returned to Utah on August 23. Gabby was in a hotel in Utah the entire time when Brian was gone. On August 19, the couple posted a video on a YouTube channel called Nomadic Static. The video features a montage of them traveling throughout the United States. It seems clear that some of the footage was recorded before this trip. This is the only video on the channel. Gabby also posted images of the inside of the couple's van on Instagram. On August 21, Gabby's father ordered an Uber Eats for the couple. They were in Salt Lake City, Utah. This was the last time he spoke to Gabby. On August 24, the couple apparently left Salt Lake City and drove to Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. Gabby is last seen on this day, checking out of a hotel in Salt Lake City. Gabby's mother spoke to Gabby via FaceTime as the couple was leaving Salt Lake City. Gabby would make her final Instagram post on August 25. There was no location data in the post, but it appears as though they were in Ogden, Utah, about 45 minutes from Salt Lake City. Gabby's mother continued receiving text messages from Gabby's phone until August 30. She is not sure those messages came from Gabby. Brian returned to Florida in the van on September 1. He was alone. He retained an attorney and has not communicated with law enforcement or the media. Gabby's mother reported Gabby missing on September 11. The police seized the 2012 Ford Transit van the same day. Brian's attorney issued a press release on September 14. He said, quote, This is understandably an extremely difficult time for both the Petito family and the Laundry family. It is our understanding that the search has been organized for Miss Petito in or near Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. On behalf of the Laundry family, it is our hope that the search for Miss Petito is successful and that Miss Petito is reunited with her family. On the advice of counsel, the Laundry family is remaining in the background at this juncture and will have no further comment. Unquote. The police have indicated that Brian Laundry is a person of interest. Now moving to my analysis. There are many unusual and noteworthy items in this case. I'll go through several here. Item number one. A couple going on a cross-country trip when they're having difficulty regulating their emotions and problems in the relationship is not ideal. The engagement had been called off before the trip started, according to Gabby's mother. It seems clear from the incident with the police that the couple had an escalating pattern of mental health symptoms and arguments. This brings me to item number two. The domestic dispute on August 12 shows how the couple was really not functioning well at all. I don't know if OCD and anxiety fully explains what happened, but it certainly could be a part of it. Stress often makes mental health symptoms worse. Gabby told the police that she was concerned about being abandoned, which seems like an interesting statement given that she's now missing. It makes me wonder if that's not what happened. I'll talk about that in a moment. I think the police were trying to be reasonable with the couple. They knew that being arrested is inconvenient, especially when far from home. They wanted to cut the couple a break. But the reality is that something can be both in the realm of mental health and the law. It's not an either or. Sometimes mental health symptoms can be dangerous, and sometimes people will blame mental health symptoms when they have nothing to do with an alleged offense. Item number three, it seems unusual that Brian would fly back and mess with a storage unit in the middle of this trip. I think it's important for the police to figure out if Brian was planning on returning to Utah the entire time, or if that was something that was decided after he traveled home on August 17. Item number four, even though Gabby could be alive and well in Wyoming, Utah, or somewhere else, she frequently communicated with her mother via FaceTime. They would talk about three times a week. All of Gabby's social media activity has stopped. It seems clear that something bad happened. This doesn't appear to be a situation where she just decided to run away. Item number five, Brian's behavior seems bizarre. For example, why would he return to Florida without Gabby? This is particularly suspicious considering that no one has heard from her. This would be different if she had contacted somebody and said she decided to stay in Utah or Wyoming. 
But for her to be missing and him to be in Florida and not saying anything, it's just hard to imagine how this could indicate anything good. Why won't Brian tell anyone where he last saw Gabby? This is the least he could do. One would think that it would be in his best interest for Gabby to be found alive. Why did Brian retain an attorney? This behavior, of course, is within his rights, but hiding behind an attorney is unhelpful considering the circumstances. If he is not guilty of a crime, he could simply tell the police what happened. If he's worried about their interrogation techniques, like getting coerced into a false confession, he can have his attorney there during questioning. I think this is a good idea, but it would make sense if he could reveal information about Gabby's location. Item number six, after the last time they talked, Gabby's mother only received text messages from Gabby's phone. Something about those messages caused Gabby's mother to doubt their origin, like maybe Gabby was not the one who created them. There have been no text from Gabby after Brian arrived home. No communication whatsoever. So what do I think happened in this case? It's important to note that at the time of making this video, no one has been charged in this case. I don't know what happened. This is just a theory. If I had to guess, I would say that an altercation occurred between Brian and Gabby, during which Gabby was left behind, perhaps in a remote and dangerous area. It's of course possible that Gabby was accidentally or intentionally injured or killed. Either way, Brian panicked and drove back home where he could ask his parents what to do. It may have been that Brian and Gabby separated, then something bad happened to Gabby. She may have chosen to leave Brian, like she just walked away from the van and then ran into a bad actor. Under that scenario, Brian was not involved. One last possibility that some people have mentioned is that this is all a hoax. Like Brian and Gabby have created this whole situation to promote their social media presence. Based on the body camera video, I'm not convinced that they were capable of perpetrating this type of hoax. I think this possibility is unlikely. The reason I believe that Brian was probably involved is due to his highly suspicious behavior. On the body camera video from August 12, he was quite spontaneous. He talked a lot to the police. He just couldn't seem to stop talking. But now, he's not saying anything. One last curious item I want to mention is the potential connection between this case and a double murder that occurred in Moab. 38-year-old Crystal Turner and 24-year-old Kylan Schulte were a newlywed couple. They were last seen on August 13 on Main Street in Moab. The couple was camping in the area. They told their friends that they were having problems with a creepy man and planned to move to a different campsite. At some point, the couple was shot and killed. Their bodies were found in the LaSalle Mountains on August 18. The police are not ruling out that there is some type of connection between their murders and this whole Gabby and Brian situation. Perhaps they believe Brian Laundrie's behavior is not inconsistent with the descriptor creepy. Now moving to my final thoughts. As I mentioned, this is a case that's just getting started. It seems likely more discoveries will be made. I hope things turn out well despite the evidence available right now not representing a source of tremendous optimism. Those are my thoughts on the case of Gabby Petito. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.